women empowerment is not just um, um, what is is a topic that is discussed under the table. No, it's it's becoming a full time. It is a full time agenda, and it's um it's been embraced in different nations and different communities. So it's not something we need to still struggle on to tell the government that oh support women. I think the government has embraced that, but we must encourage the government to you know make room for new technologies, accommodate new technologies, embrace new te technologies, like, like the use of AI, the use of, you know, cryptocurrency and things like that. Once the government embraced that, women would find their place on that seat. Women would find their place on that table. The goal is to um, not just train for these women to run off, but it's for them to gain the skills that they need, you know, to get a job or to, you know, start their own businesses. So maybe one strategy is because we're moving to the capital city, we're going to be selling like hotcakes. Maybe maybe that's one of the strategy. <laughs> At the time, it, it didn't feel like a strategy, but now that I'm thinking about it, maybe it was it. But it wasn't quite so. Um, people were still, a lot of women were still warming up to the idea of uh, learning tech because, of course, there's not much orientation on what you'd become when you learn what you learn and what you can even learn um, to be able to do whatever you, your dream is. So we needed to do a lot of groundwork on orientation as well. It was it was not just, oh, come and learn how to code, and everybody will now carry their bags and say we are going to code. Um, Right off the top of my head is that, what do you know? You know, that's the question on everybody's face. Um, either when you're giving us, you're making a suggestion, you're giving your opinion. There's always that question of, "What do you know? You're just a woman." And uh, funny thing, I didn't get into the industry as a programmer or full stack web developer or something like that. I got into the industry as a business developer first. Um, so speaking from a business side of things, it was almost like when we, the people who know the codes, are talking. You guys just listen, you know, because it, it always there's always that feeling of you probably do not understand. So initially, getting into the market, it's just tough because as a young woman who's not coding, <laughs> people don't listen. People don't listen. If you make a suggestion, you must say it twice, you know, before you're heard and you must, you know, have, have some volume before you're heard, you must, it's almost like you're fighting your way into, into any room or being heard. And it, it, it became a normalcy for me. I think it became like, you have to, if whatever you're saying, you have to say it louder or you have to say it twice because first you're a woman. Secondly, you're not a programmer. You don't code. Well, I think over the years I've been able to, um, make myself a bit seen or heard and uh, prove relevance over these years. So in some strange gatherings, probably, but in my circle within the tech ecosystem of Cameroon, I think that it's becoming very um, clear that we have a place we've been able to sit on the table as well. And with what the work we are doing, there's evidence that there's... Um, there's impact happening. So that also gives us um, our position without too much hassle, without too much fight. So uh, a typical example, personally, while we were being we're fighting through COVID, fighting through the, the heat of the crisis, there was that um, handicap of being at home and not being able to work or being able to coordinate work by by the limitation of not having the right skills to get remote jobs. So that alone is personal before even taking it to. And I'd want to imagine that all of these other women face some of those challenges. And that was enough motivation for me. And the impact that I really, really push for is the fact that they are able to learn to be able to see that the skill cannot just help them get jobs, but also help them come up with solutions. 
innovations to solve problems, common problems within within the communities, which is why um, some years back we, we included design thinking in in our courses because it helps the students look within the communities around them and just identify common problems within the community that they themselves have personally faced or someone close to home has personally faced. And you bring it on as a an idea or a thought. And while you're taking the course, you're able to use that as a real-life problem, a real-time problem to develop a tech solution with what you're learning. And at the end of three months, you should have a possible solution, a possible tech solution for the problem you identified initially that is being um, that's plaguing your community or you yourself. So it's it goes beyond. It it not just doubles as a project that you can show your employer, but it also bought it doubles as a potential solution that can actually change the community, change your impact your whole community generally, which is something that uh, um, we have been seeing and we're very excited about.